Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you all for clicking on this video. If you are someone who enjoys talking about movies, how about clicking that subscribe button? So today we're gonna to be talking about the eight movies that I saw the month of November 2020. Also, I got a new mic, so we're gonna just see how well this works. I actually ended up getting it because I did a live show you guys this month, which was really exciting. It was actually my second time. I'm gonna link that down below if you guys didn't uh, catch that live show with Levels of Geek. It was a Thanksgiving episode. It was a total of seven of us on the panel. Alex from Levels of Geek, myself, uh, Netflix, Flix Talk, Movie Files, Horror and Coffee, and Brando the Critic. It is a long one, you guys. It is really long, but if you guys can go and just check it out. So of course, I always anything that i did review on my channel will be linked down below in the description box if you do want my overall take on that particular movie also i'm not going to be doing a haul i did that for a couple months and i, I, I don't know you guys it, it wasn't really working out for me so we're just not gonna do it anymore if i do a haul it'll just be like on my insta story so you guys can check me out there uh let's go ahead and get on with freaky and um honestly that was really really good i truly truly did enjoy that movie it's totally my cup of tea actually you know i'm gonna put it under a while let me change it over to wow <laughs> it really was my cup of tea and it, it has that gory aspect to it because they did want it to have that friday the 13th release date that's why i'm assuming they didn't put it out in october but this movie does give me more of the spooky season october type of vibe now like i did say in my review i don't understand why this particular movie gets compared to freaky friday a lot i know it is a body swap deal but given the fact that it is a grown man and a teenager swapping bodies to me personally it just makes more sense comparing it uh, to the hot chick with rachel mcadams and uh, rob shiner shiner i don't know whatever his name is <laughs> i think i said it right in the review you guys so it makes more sense to me personally to compare to that particular movie Catherine newton honestly i know that in my original review i did say that she was like a disney star but she's not she's not from disney i just knew i knew her from somewhere i just you know since she's young and she's such cute looking little actress i just assume disney channel but honestly um i know her from uh big little lies we're gonna go on to hard kill which is a netflix original movie freaky is in theaters i didn't forget to tell you that but again that is in my original review but moving on to hard kill which does star bruce willis and jesse metcalf you may know him from like desperate housewives or john tucker must die I remember him the most from Passions, which is a soap opera that came on way back when, like in the early 2000s. Well, actually, I think did it start in the early 2000s or late 90s? Oh my God, you guys! This this is forgettable. Not not forgettable. This is um. Hold on, you guys. At a row below. Okay, here we go. Trash. And let's just change that color. Uh, we're just gonna do black. Does that can you see it? Oh, you can't see it. Ugh. We'll give it an orange color. Do I have orange already on here? I don't think I do. Okay, yeah, it's there. Okay. So where was I? Trash. Trash. Trash, you guys. What a waste of an hour and like 40 minutes. The acting, you guys, terrible. Terrible. Okay. The screenplay terrible the action terrible terrible you guys i do not watch this movie even though it does have bruce willis and maybe tim dean do not watch the do not watch the movie i don't know if this makes a better difference on it that's really all i'm gonna say about this movie we're not even gonna go any further with it so let's go ahead and get on with the next one, Fat Man, starring Mel Gibson. It's another one that is on video on demand. And this one was actually really enjoyable. Mel Gibson does play Santa Claus. Not your typical Santa Claus, not very jolly and merry. He shoots people, uh, well, not really people, a person who's trying to kill him. Uh, but basically it's just about this one like little rich little kid prick who is upset because he got coal for Christmas because you know he is a very naughty little boy and he ends up sending a hitman to go find Santa Claus and get rid of him and shoot him not shoot him will kill him but will shoot him kill him whatever let's say this even though it is a Santa Claus 
movie or holiday movie whatever it is more for adults because there is a lot of action and violence but definitely definitely not for kids like i cannot stress this enough especially if you do have younger kids who do believe in santa claus i do really really want to warn you and it's gonna be it, it is gonna be a spoiler you guys and trust me you're gonna thank me on me spoiling this for you if you do have children and uh, now if you don't have children i do really apologize but this is for my families the mere fact that santa claus does get shot in the head I would feel will be very very traumatizing for little ones let's go ahead and move on to happiest season which I actually just reviewed this it is a Hulu original and this movie actually was really really good star Kristen Stewart and Mackenzie Davis they are a couple who does travel to Harper's um, family's house for the holidays uh, Harper is played by Mackenzie Davis there is a little funny joke with um, Abby about her being an orphan um, even though you know she is this grown-ass adult and she just mentioned it throughout the the movie that you know the parents died a long time ago but let me go ahead and continue to move on because like I said I just did a review for it up next would be Jingle Jangle which is a Netflix original movie uh, which would be another Christmas movie I'm gonna go ahead and put it under four kids because it is four kids. Um, I mean, not necessarily four kids, it is a whole family affair, but just to be nice about it, I personally did forget about it. I'm not even going to lie to you, but it was a cutesy enough movie from what I do remember it. It's not for everybody because it is a musical. It's not like jam-packed musical in there. The villain would be my only thing that I do remember that I was not here for, um, who is played by uh, Kiki Michael Key. Villain was just not a good one. I mean, I get it, it's a kid's movie, so it makes sense for a kid movie. But I feel like even though it is a kid's movie, we've seen better villains, uh, more menacing. And yeah, there was nothing really threatening about him. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air reunion, which did come on at HBO Max. It is a documentary. And this is gonna go under, wow. I love, loved this uh, reunion, this documentary. It is a little over an hour long. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, I didn't cry, you guys. Can you believe it? I really didn't cry. I love the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air growing up. I was intrigued the whole time they even brought back the og aunt viv and um, they explained what happened with that whole situation of her being recasted i did want to see a little bit more of nikki i can't remember the the actor's name that was that's probably my only negative thing is that we didn't get more of him it, it really does look like they edited a lot of his part out like they didn't really want to incorporate it and I know he wasn't like the big main focus and it was everybody else and he was just a kid. Moving on to the princess switch switched again. This is a, another Netflix original movie. This is a sequel to the princess switch starring a triple Vanessa Hudgens and this movie was enjoyable. Could be okay, could be enjoyable. We're just gonna leave it under enjoyable. Did we need it? No, we didn't need it. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we do get a third one. And more than likely, they're both going to be pregnant at the same time because that's where I feel the next step would be, would be a royal baby. And of course, it would be both of them. Either they're both pregnant at the same time or midway through it, we're going to have the other one being pregnant. Or towards the very end, oh, I'm pregnant too. And then we're going to get a fourth part with the other one being pregnant and the other one, you know, raising a toddler. Who knows? They're cheesy, Hallmark type of movies. If you're not into these type of movies, you're not going to like this movie. Moving on to Christmas Chronicles 2, another Netflix movie. And I thought that one was really enjoyable as well. And it is, again, the sequel to the Christmas Chronicles that came out in 2008. I believe it was. Of course in that movie we did find out at the very end that Mrs. Claus was Goldie Hall. If you don't know Goldie Hall is Kurt Russell's uh, wife. Kurt Russell is who plays Santa Claus in this movie or if you want to be technical about it before you come at me that's not his wife. Well his partner but you guys they've been together since like the 80s. They're technically married already. Again is it a sequel that we needed? No. But we got it. I enjoyed it. I do enjoy this sequel over The Princess Switch 2. So if you had to pick between the two, I would go for Christmas Chronicles 2. We do have Julian Dennison come out in this movie, who was that fire-burning guy from Deadpool 2. But he does play Belschnickel. 
Y'all know how I am with names, but I, I, I'm about 90% sure that's how you pronounce it. Um, and he's technically the villain of the story. And it, it's a really cutesy movie. We do have the original kids coming back. Of course, they are older. Uh, we do have Tyrese come in this movie, which I was just like, dude, what the fuck are you doing in this movie? <laughs> I just couldn't. Like, I just laughed so much because I'm just like, seriously, you're, you're in this, like, cheesy ass movie we do spend more time in the north pole we do get to see more of it we see more of goldie hall there's a really nice heartwarming scene <laughs> i'm trying to think about it um when they do get to the airport i'm just gonna say that i'm not gonna again i don't want to spoil anything for you but that was really really touching i didn't cry in the movie you guys because i know i'm a crier my eyes did get a, a tad bit teary i won't lie to you guys with that but i didn't cry i did i wasn't like bawling hopefully the audio with this turned out well otherwise i just kind of have this for decorative reasons and i'm trying to look cool with it now these are the eight movies that i saw in the month of november let me know down below what did you guys uh, get a chance to check out this month did we check out any of the same things if we did happen to check out the same things do you agree with my rankings if not just let me know where would you rank them or how would you rank them this is all that i have for you guys today again i'm not doing a haul of course before you guys click out of this video don't forget to give it a like Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time that I post something new. Until next time, I'll see you guys at concessions. Bye!